chapter 2, I want to talk about this. You know, a lot of people know the story. In case you don't, you'd have to, you'd have to be from another planet not to know the story of Jesus. But let me just tell you really quickly. There was a young man who was born in Bethlehem. And this is in the Middle East, in Bethlehem. And raised in Nazareth. And he was sent to earth by God for a specific reason. He had a very comfortable seat in heaven, but sent to earth by God for, for a very specific reason. And he came talking about a very specific idea. He came talking about something that was otherworldly. It was out of this world. And for his efforts, he was persecuted Attempted to be killed many times, but then finally murdered. And he was murdered. Pushed by the hands of religion. Murdered by the government. Because of what he talked about. Can you imagine that? Because of what he talked about. His message got him murdered. He consented to the murder because it was either him or you. Now, he was innocent. He committed no sin. Even the government said, Rome said, I can find no fault in this man. Why do you want this man killed? His own people delivered him up to the government and said, this man's got to go. But he's got to go because of who he claims to be and what he's talking about. And so they murdered him, and he was buried on Friday, and then he was resurrected on two days later, well, three days on the third day. And then he presented himself to over 500 people. We have eyewitness accounts and documentation. Even your enemies, Rome, and even the world would not dispute the story of Jesus. They don't dispute it. There has never been any archaeological evidence ever to confirm anything against what the Bible says, ever. And many people way smarter than me and you have tried. And believe me, if they, have, if they would have succeeded, you would know it by now. Because just like they wanted Jesus gone, they want his scriptures gone, they want his story gone, they want, right? And since they can't get rid of it, what they have to do is confuse it. Anytime you can't get rid of someone, you only have two choices. You can confuse it or include it. So they include it, and they confuse it. They know they can't erase his story. They know they can't erase his history. So they confuse it and put it in in a different way and try to hide it and try to lie about it, okay? And that's been the story for, for all of this time, you know? And so you've heard of that, I'm sure. If you haven't heard of that, then maybe, I mean, I'm not assuming anything these days. Maybe you've never heard of that. But that's what happened. And so, but really why it happened, those are the details of what happened. Why did it happen? I'm going to show you something because Jesus was murdered because of his message, and if I can read off the screen, I will. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's just go through this. I want to show you the antithesis of what he talked about. And this is such a big warning that 1 Corinthians, well, this church in Corinth, they were now warned by Paul, the apostle Paul, of what to look out for. And you should pay attention to this because, you know, it's really, it's really disturbing to me how much effort the world is going through to confuse you and how much effort they put into lying to you. And even the government, you know, I read something yesterday that our government put out, and it was so disturbing that I took to Facebook. Normally, I don't attack political things on Facebook. I will address plenty of things in here. But I usually don't attack it so direct unless I feel it being absolutely necessary. And from the White House, they declared today to be Transgender Visibility Day. Now, if you don't think that was intentional, then let me welcome you to the party. Because the persecution of your faith is real. The persecution of you finding out what I'm about to tell you is real. If you don't think the devil would waste no expenses... And spare no punches to make sure you are confused, bitter, 
angry, upset, lost. If you don't think he is after you, then you have been deceived. And so instead of now, can you imagine on the most holy day for believers, the day of the resurrection? And I don't care if you voted for Joe Biden or not. That should bother you. It should deeply disturb you that they can, with the hand of government, throw something in your face as a believer so, so offensive just to see. That, you know, I'm going to tell you what they're doing. They're testing you. They're trying to see how deep does it actually go. And if you don't think that they sat in that boardroom and planned the day and strategically wrote it down, looked around the room and said, should we do it? Should we do it? Should we do it? And all of them said, yes, let's do it. They ain't going to do nothing. They're asleep. They're not going to do anything. They barely go to church. They'll let this go by just like they let the Easter bunny replace Jesus. You can go to Walmart and find Easter bunnies. You can't. They got one chocolate cross in there is hidden in the back. I'm telling you the truth. The word Easter has nothing to do with the resurrection. Not a thing. And so you, you, you'd be deceived if you don't think this is strategic. And the devil's sitting in that room laughing, laughing, because we depend way too much on other sources of information. We depend way too much on government and way too much on systems and industries and the education system and the medical system and the banking system and the, all of the systems. We depend on that like they are wise and that God is dumb. We listen to them and don't listen to God. And then when it comes to Resurrection Sunday, we will come to church like it's a holiday, but then we will still let the world's systems direct and influence our minds as to what is actually true and real for us. And then they'll just test you. They'll say, how about we do a day where it's the exact opposite of what they believe, and let's do it on the same day they're going to do their thing. Guys, you got to understand something. Even under Rome, during Passover, the Romans let the Jews have their holiday. As bad as that government was, they had to take down all dead bodies off the cross. You can't have dead bodies on the street on Passover. But this government said, let's, let's promote something that is anti-God's image. And let's promote something that is demonic at its root. That is, that is I'm talking about causing that community, those transgender individuals are suffering. Suffering in confusion. And if we promote these things and we don't say nothing about these things, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. It should bother you. The Christian faith has gone asleep. And there's consequences to this. And we have turned church into an entertainment industry. And people will not sacrifice for the gospel anymore. And people, they won't even sacrifice their schedule. I mean, we got Easter egg hunts to get to today. And we got, you know, family dinner after this. Right? We got things going on. We, you know, we got stuff. I mean, the reason why somebody wouldn't go to church, if you're a believer, I mean, you should go to church regardless of what the message is, regardless if you like the music or not, regardless if the a pastor offended you last week. Regardless if the people around you offended you last week, you keep going to your family member's house and they offend you. You keep going to Walmart and they offend you. You know. Publix gave you the wrong change, you still go back. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about this for real. Think about this. Think about this. We are not defenders of the faith. And people are, and people are like, oh, you know, the Christians are just supposed to be the nicest individual. We are nice. Nice and firm. Nice and unmovable. Nice and strong. So you got to keep this in mind. If you're a young person and you have never heard these types of things, believe me. It was the devil's best interest to corrupt America to a point where you don't even know, which was a Christian nation, that you would not even know. We'll mix up so many religions and so many worldviews and so many cultural things. We'll take you forwards and backwards like a yo-yo up and down, left and right by your emotions and narratives and, and 
uh, propaganda that you won't ever know what is correct. The only thing any nation ever has that is solid is the word of God and churches who stand their ground. If you remove the churches, you have removed the evidence of morality from heaven. The churches have to gather. They have to assemble. Do you know what governments hate? Assemblies. Governments don't care if you're an individual Christian, as long as you never assemble with the rest. They don't. See, we have a law in this nation called the right to assemble, but there's another law called unlawful assembly, which means you can assemble as long as it's not for this or that or the other or if it's not done in a certain way. In other words, we're afraid of people getting together we're, because when you come together, we get unified. When you come together, we get on the same page. When you come together, we sacrifice what we all have in our agendas and what we think, and we put it all together to have one common goal. And do you see how powerful that is? When you put that together, you're about to do some damage. And if you're the devil, you have to divide them to conquer them. Am I making any sense? So with these next little, I got about 30 minutes here. I want to read through this. I want you to see this. All right? This is a day of of sobriety. Because the people that, let me just say this. The people that put all this together, and I'm not saying this to be, you know, put any type of guilt on you. I'm just telling you. The people all over the world, including this church, who sacrifice their time, energy, talent, efforts, everything that they bring to the table, they do it as a sacrifice and an honor to God for you. And that alone should be honored. That alone should be honored because they don't do it for any other reason but to serve God's purpose and to connect you to God. And when people do that for you, it deserves honor. It deserves respect, doesn't it? Right? So we just have forgotten how to respect things. We have forgotten how to be, how to be people who can sacrifice for what we want instead of trying to have everything we think we need instead of what God told us to be having to do, and to do. You got to make sacrifices to make progress. And anytime you have a group of people going in one direction, nobody gets everything they want. Does that make sense? You don't get what you want. We all have to deny self. We all have to deny what we thought. We all have to, to get on the same page with God and then get on the same page with each other. But there is something, you know, even in my short 40 some years, I remember a time where people that went to church always went to church. But now we're just busy. While we're busy, your government is having meetings on how to confuse you more. And make sure that, but by the way, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Your children and their children, if you don't, if you don't do something, if you don't say something, if you don't stand up, if you don't get your faith anchored, and maybe you're wavering, maybe you don't know what's up or down. But I'm here to tell you the truth. If you don't get this settled, this nation will be in such shambles you will not recognize it. I cannot promise you that you will never be persecuted for your faith. I can promise you that you will be persecuted. To the degree, I don't know. It's the truth. So this is not a casual spectator sport. This is where we get involved, we get invested, we get on the same page, we give to whatever is necessary to achieve the purpose. And when churches are doing good in the community, you know, people want to criticize that. And when churches are struggling, everybody's clapping. I wonder why that is. Right? And then when you need to get married or buried, you're like, where's my pastor? I don't. You see, there are things that God puts in place for a reason. The mind of a nation has to be submitted to God. Isn't this true? See, sometimes we just get off track. So, Resurrection Sunday is a, today. This is going to be about getting on track. You know, people, Pastor Mike, always inviting people to church. He, uh, I get two or three text messages a week from the church. When y'all coming to church, who are you inviting to church? If you don't invite them to church, they're going to go to a meeting somewhere. Instead of meeting here, they're going to meet with their TV. They're going to meet with the iPad. They're going to meet with their friends. They're, you're going to somebody's meeting on Sunday. It's not like you're not meeting. You're going to meet with someone. It's just a matter of what is the purpose of that meeting, you know, and where is it leading? 
Now, let's get to this. For I determined, that, now this is Paul talking to the church in Corinth. Watch the message here. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him what? Crucified. <clears throat> and now he says, I was with you. By the way, what, what Jesus came and offered was the kingdom of God. The Bible says that Jesus preached the kingdom everywhere that he went. So that was what God wanted to give you, okay? Paul is saying, I have made it known, that's verse 2, I have made it known that, it's no, that there's nothing else that can get you what God had for you except the work of Jesus on the cross. Him crucified and the knowledge of Jesus Christ is your access to the kingdom. You, does that make sense? In other words, he's talking to people that are very, very committed to their knowledge. People that are very, very committed to their own ways. He himself, who was an expert in the faith of Judaism, who was a leader and rising in the ranks in the Jewish system, and probably going to be a Pharisee soon. And he is, right, he is persecuting churches. He is asking for permission to persecute this same church that he is now defending. So you can see people can make a U-turn. But they're committed to their knowledge. They prize their knowledge. They want their knowledge. They're, they're excited about their knowledge, especially the Greek influence on the Romans. They love their knowledge. A lot of people today love knowledge. We are knowledgeaholics. There is, listen, I have some stats. Maybe I wrote them down here. There, there is something like, maybe it's on this page, 44 million 41 million YouTube channels. 41 million. Do you know what people do on YouTube? They search for knowledge. Excuse me, 51 million. There are 28,000 universities on planet Earth. 28,000 for people to get higher knowledge. There is 4,000 religions. 4,000 thousand religions on the planet people searching for knowledge there is 45,000 christian denominations 45,000 christian denominations that means whatever denomination you're from which is not biblical there's no denominations in the bible john the baptist didn't start the baptist work <laughs> there is no lutheran church there's no Presbyterians. There's no Catholics. Not in the Bible. And you say, how do we get all this? How do we get all of this? What is man learning? He's learning his own system. And how do you get 45,000 versions of Christianity from one Bible and one teacher when you veer off into your own wisdom? And the devil is the author of all of those things. And Jesus did not preach any of those religions and he came with one message that said, there's not many denominations, there's one kingdom. You can't divide yourself up. I don't care what your modality is for baptism. I don't care what you think is um, how you sanctify someone into the ministry. I don't care what you think. I'm erasing all of that, and I'm going to replace it with a system of faith. If you... Agree with me, Jesus said, and if you understand my message, then you can be a citizen of this kingdom. I'm not interested in your membership of a religion. I'm not interested where you water baptized, you know, by sprinkle or submersion. The modality by what do you sprinkle or do you submerge? Think of these things. Man is on the hunt for information. Paul said, I, listen to this. He said, I'm telling you, I got something so foolish to tell you that it's way beyond what you could ever learn in school, way beyond what the world system could ever show you. It's going to be through a man named Jesus Christ and him crucified. How about that? And everybody who went to school for eight and nine years was like, really? What am I going to do with all the schooling I did? I mean, use it for something. But it can't save you. It can't provide for you. In fact, if you lean on it, it'll kill you. Because it'll put you into a new religion. A humanistic religion where you work yourself to death. Where you work until you fall apart. 
You work until you worry. You worry, they're, is the company going to close? You worry, is, are they going to keep me on? You worry, are they going to give me a pay raise? I mean, the whole world's fighting. We need minimum $20 to shake French fries. I mean, I think we're having the wrong, the wrong discussion. Paul said, I determined not to know. He said, I, I, by the way, I know a lot. But I determined not to tell you anything that can get you access to the kingdom except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Can we keep going? This ain't the most shouting message, but it's good. I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. And my speech, my preaching was not with persuasive words of human wisdom. See, I'm not, I'm, that's what I'm trying. I'm not trying to impress you. I'm just telling you what happened. Human wisdom. Somebody say human wisdom. Boy, see, I mean, 51 million YouTube channels of human wisdom. Minus the few ones that maybe be doing, you know, doing some kingdom stuff. But, I mean, you got to understand, 51 million, I mean, really. It's not that the channel is bad. You see, we can just get rid of our faith and just live off of YouTube University. But in demonstration, not human wisdom, but I got something there. In demonstration of the spirit and of power. By the way, so you see how that letter is capitalized there? The Holy Spirit, not the human spirit. Somebody say the Holy Spirit. See, not the, not the human spirit, the Holy Spirit. Now watch, watch Paul now. By the way, the resurrection of Jesus Christ was to ultimately restore the Holy Spirit to the body. The power that raised Jesus from the dead was not his own power. The power that, raised, the power that healed everybody he touched was not Jesus' power. The power that he spoke, and when they said he speaks like a man with authority, that was not his power. That was the Holy Spirit, without which he could do nothing. But isn't he Jesus? You have to have, if you're on this earth, you have to have the Spirit of God abiding in you to do what God put you on earth to do. Without it, you are limited to the human spirit, which is why you're confused. The demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Boy, that would be something, wouldn't it? That's what got Jesus murdered. He demonstrated a technology that they don't understand on YouTube. He demonstrated a technology that baffles every doctor that sees a miracle healing. He demonstrated a technology that baffles every economist who cannot understand that when they pronounce that we are going to have downturn and economic collapse, that Jesus is pulling resources out of thin air and saying, not my my people, I mean, maybe you, but I can demonstrate a spiritual dimension that I have access to. In fact, what I want to give you is what my father sent me to give you. And this is the reason I came. I didn't come so that we could start a religion. I didn't come so we could, you know, branch out and have 45,000 denominations of the same, you know, from the same scriptures. I didn't come for that. You should understand, Jesus was crucified not because of any of those things. He died not to establish any of those things. Jesus did not die so we could have a bus pass to heaven. That, that shocks a lot of people to know that. I'm going to explain that a little more. Can I keep going? You see, Paul, he's, he's disqualifying himself in terms of his, he said, it's not my education. It's not, it's not what I went to school for. That's not going to help. He said that your faith would never be in the wisdom of men. Can we just be honest? That's where, that's where most people are. In fact, when I tell you God can do this, that, or the other, you're smarter than God most of the time. You, and I'll tell you what the scriptures say, and people are like, yeah. I said, why didn't you obey that? I'm struggling, Pastor. Okay, did you do this principle from the Word? Well, so either you're scared to do it or you're smarter than God. Which one is it? Because there's no other way. You're either Your mind has tricked you. You're deceived. And you're like, you're deceived. I'm smarter than God. I'm going to do this. That makes logical. He didn't ask you to live by logic. Don't live by human wisdom. I don't care what they taught you in school. There's another, see, this, this does not vie with what people learned in school. Why do you think these scriptures are here? The wisdom of men, your own wisdom. However, we speak the wisdom 
of those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age, because they are coming to what? So they're going along. What are they coming to? Nothing. Nothing. Why are they coming to nothing? Because that's where they came from. You always return to what you came from. This age came from nothing, so it returns to nothing. Your poverty came from nothing, so it returns to nothing. After it's done whooping you, it returns to nothing because it came from nothing. That means that, in other words, all that's actually reality is what's in the kingdom. Everything else is nothing, meaning it's an illusion. It doesn't exist. It's nothing. Isaiah, I think it's 41, basically talks about the work of idols. And, it's, and, and God says through this chapter, he says something like, it might be 41, 42 something. He says, the idols that you worship, he said, their work is nothing. Their power is nothing. Something like that. They don't exist, in other words. In other words, man made them up. Did you know that? Man carved images, created systems, and then by the, by the foolishness, okay, of, of their own detriment, they endowed these things with certain powers that don't exist. In other words, it's false. The enemy has usurped your authority to craft images and to pretend that these carbon images or systems that you create have some ability to save you. And God is saying, guess what they're coming to? Nothing. So as they're coming to nothing, don't hang on to it or guess what you'll be coming to? Can I keep going? We speak the wisdom. I got a few minutes here. We, we speak the wisdom of who? Of God. It's different. It's a kingdom wisdom. In, in a sin of mystery, hidden, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages. I could just teach every single bit of this. Uh, before the ages, for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified Jesus. If they had known that the spirit that was in God would be multiplied all over the world in believers, they would have left him as one. In fact, in fact, they would have probably promoted him to an earthly kingship. Because as long as he doesn't die, the Holy Spirit stays in one. But if he dies and his blood is shed for you, then you're clean, and then you're sanctified, and then you can now receive the same spirit in the kingdom of God can reside in you, and then you are exempt from their system. I am preaching on this little chair, I'm telling you. Oh, by the way, I know y'all seen my head, look. I have to make sure, because I know y'all are looking at me. So let me tell you what happened. <laughs> I quit going to a barbershop about eight years ago, and I just learned to cut my own hair. I just, the barbershop thing, I just, the whole process, it just drove me wild. So it's like a whole day activity, man. And so I just said, I just ain't got time for that. So I just learned how to just do it myself. And then when I learned that, I said, that's good enough. <laughs> right? I'm already married. I ain't trying to catch nobody. I ain't trying to impress nobody. Just even it up, and we'll shape it up, and then we go on about our business. So anyway, I can't really cut that part of my hair, you know, and so I cut my own hair, and then I call my wife. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. She's in there telling me a story. I'm sitting there, she's, and she's just supposed to do this part. And then I'm looking in the mirror, all of a sudden, the guard flies off, but she's still talking. I was like, bang. I jumped up, she hit me. I was like, <laughs> so if y'all wondering, I know y'all looking, but uh, about eight days, it'll grow back. I meant to say it because I, I looked up and I saw my head again. I was like, oh, yeah, let me tell him about that. <laughs> so y'all can stop tapping each other. You see his head. I don't know who did that to his head. We did it ourselves. Some of y'all laughing because you did that before. They've done me like that at the barbershop too. So, you know. All right. So now, I got about 10 minutes. Can I, let, me, let, me, let me get to my point here. 
Verse 6. Go to verse 6 for me. Actually, go to verse 10. I'm going to skip down. But God has revealed them through his, what? Spirit. Now, for the Spirit searches all things, the deep things of God. Can I tell you two things? And I don't want this to get too heavy, but let me tell you a couple of things. Number one, Jesus did not come to start a religion, but let me just show you Luke chapter 12, verse 32, just in case you never heard this before. He says, I want to end all worry. Paul is saying here, your own wisdom is why you worry. The systems of man is why you worry. You lean on them. And if you've never learned how faith works, you've never heard of the kingdom of God, it is a government that was supposed to rule earth forever through the hearts of men. You were never intended to be ruled by outside government. Amen. Never intended. Okay? So God is trying to reverse what we did to ourselves when we rebelled against God. So Adam was the highest ranking official on earth. The highest ranking official. He was the son of God. He was an ambassador to his own government, which means when you're an ambassador to a government, you are the highest ranking official in a foreign land representing your country, the highest. To the point, the physical man, to the point that if the king himself showed up, you outrank him. This is true because he delegates that position to you. If he shows up, he shows up for some other business. This is true if you ever see... Uh, you know, political movies, or if you ever watch them, if the, if the president visits where he has an ambassador, he has to still work through the ambassador. He can't just show up in that country and jump in front of the one he put there. He would then work behind him and through that person because he put him there as his representative. So because of Adam's highest ranking position, when he disobeyed, that is high treason because of the level of his rank. So now you see why we're in this mess, right? So you are born into that same family line in need of a savior. That's what you lost. You lost your ability to be backed, as an ambassador would, by your government for the assignment you were sent to here. You did not lose a bus pass to heaven. If you die today or if you die anytime soon before Jesus returns, you will go to heaven for a little while. So I'm not trying to scare you. But if you read the back of the book, all of the saints return. And the kingdom of God is restored on earth just as it was intended. Now, if you don't believe that, ask yourself this question. If Adam had never sinned, what would God's purpose have been for him? It wasn't a temporary assignment. God is a king. He is expanding his kingdom to another territory. That was a permanent plan. God does not change his mind. If Adam had not sinned, that's exactly what humanity would be doing today. However, because he sinned, we are on a reconciliation assignment momentarily where we can still experience the kingdom of God coming into the earth and try to let everyone know that God, by his grace and mercy and through his own son and his own blood and his own sacrifice, is offering you a way to come back and be reconciled, be citizens of the kingdom again. And not only that, get your job back, become an authority again. Not only that, be restored all of your benefits again. Not only that, all of your provisions again. In other words, the story of the prodigal son where he's running back to the father and the father is waiting on him to return and he runs out to him and as soon as he grabs him, he says, I have been waiting for you. Kill the fatted calf. I've been waiting for this. We're throwing a royal dinner. Put the ring on his finger. This is the signet ring, which means authority, which means that he can still act on my behalf. He can stamp a document with my image and like he never left home. Put the sandals on his feet means restore him back to righteousness and rulership. Put the robe on him. And the one who was there the whole time was, was jealous of that. And he said, you don't understand. The one who was lost and was dead to me has returned. He didn't, listen, he didn't take the man. And go put him in some other place. He put him back in the family business. The lost sheep that ran away. Did you notice what Jesus did? He said, I went and found the sheep that I lost. He said, I found the, uh, left the 99. I got the one. He, did you see where he took him? He didn't take him to heaven. He took him back to the fold. Put him right back in the fold where the rest. Said, now we're good again. I got the lost one back. Do not fear, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure 
to restore to you the kingdom. Not a religion. Okay? Do y'all understand this? Why? What, how, how, how is God restoring to me the kingdom? The Holy Spirit moves back inside of the person. And when, listen, when the Spirit of God moves inside of a person, this is like the picture of a foreign governor moving into a territory where he is going to rule, like America did. We had colonies in the beginning, remember? The king didn't come here. We were, the colonies were ruled by governors. They're local kings. The governor was the king locally. When you see, in other words, this is a sign that the kingdom is in another place. It's just an extension. When you receive the governor, when you say this prayer, Jesus be my Lord, you have gotten the kingdom by the Holy Ghost moving back inside of you. And if you think about what a kingdom entails, there's an economy. There are laws. I'm not talking about ritual, ritualistic laws that are performance-based where you have to earn something. I'm talking about there are things that govern how heaven functions. And when you learn how that functions, you become the ruler for God on the earth. In other words, with God's backing, with God's power, with God's wisdom, not the wisdom of man, not your own. That's what living by faith is. It is living in another dimension. Though, I, though you see me here locally, I am not of my local ancestry. Y'all should have wrote that one down. Though you see me here, do not judge according to the flesh. Don't think, Paul is saying, that I'm weak because I look weak. I'm not here on my own. Jesus said, do not fear. I'm going to take you out of that system. Because before this, he says, do not act like the Gentiles act. Do not live how they live. Don't worry about what you're going to eat, how you're going to live, what you're going to wear. Don't worry about how to get their, your end. Do you know that no ambassador worries about where they're going to live? When the government sends someone to another country, they have a place to live. They take care of their bills. They provide health care. They provide everything. They, they, they are a walking envoy of everything that their country has. You, when you see them, you are seeing that country. Their character represents the country. The way they walk represents the country. The way they live represents the country. Their own country builds the house that they live in. The foreigners do not build the house that the ambassador lives in. It has to be built by people that know how they want to live. And God said, me, I'll do the same. I will not dwell in a house made by the hands of men. I'm going to build my own. Jesus said, I will tear down that temple that men built. And on the third day, I'll raise it again. In other words, I have to build my own house because I want to live in it. I'm not trying to get you out of the earth. I'm trying to get you reconnected to the kingdom. Now, there's two little pieces to this before we go. I want you to see, okay? Two little pieces to this that you need to understand for yourself or maybe somebody that you love because we can see what Jesus did. And I'm serious about people getting reconnected to their faith because when there is, if there is no resurrection, there is no reception of the Holy Spirit. If there's no reception of the Holy Spirit, then there is no kingdom presence ruling over you. You don't have access unless you have the Holy Spirit. I can tell you this. Many people go to church their whole lives and you never hear a discussion about the Holy Spirit. People talk about God, and they'll talk about Jesus, but they won't talk about the Holy Spirit. We won't. Because, see, this is a kingdom thing. The Holy Ghost is the local king inside of man. God does not come. Jesus has not. He, he came and left already. Well, who is here on the earth? The Holy Spirit. That, and he speaks to your spirit. What does he talk about? He talks about kingdom things. He talks the faith to trigger your faith. The kingdom is also known as, if you want to ever know this, it's also known as the faith. Like a noun, the faith. And then you have faith because of the faith that's in you. 
Isn't that right? Two things. Two things that you need to know. One is that there's still some issues with the modern age, modern religion, modern technologies, all the scientific methods that people come up with to replace what the highest technology on earth, uh, which is the Holy Spirit, can do. The Holy Spirit is the highest technology ever introduced to the earth. Not the most modern medical breakthrough, not the most scientific medical breakthrough. In fact, when mankind gets filled with his own knowledge, there's always revolution. But it to his detriment, not to his advantage. So mankind filled with pride, filled with his own knowledge, always separates himself from God. The more, the better you get in this world, sometimes you feel like, I don't need God. I asked a rich man one time, I said, I said, you know, I, you want to go to church? I start talking about church. He's like, nah. I said, why not? He said, man, I got it. I got everything under control. I was like, really? Let me ask you this question. There's two things you can't get. One, what about your eternal destination? You can't get that. I don't care how big the merger was. I don't care how popular you were. I don't care how many millions of Facebook followers you have. You could be sacrificing your eternal destiny because you put faith in something else. You put faith in works. You put faith in your effort. You put faith in your degree. You put faith in the medical breakthrough. You put faith in the economy. You put faith... Listen, the just do not live by their works or their accolades. They live by faith. And faith is a system that comes by the king, from the king, for the king. You can't have it because you were good. My dad, my dad dated a woman years ago when I was young. And I remember I was just a little interested in church. I wasn't raised in church, but I was a little interested. And I, I remember asking her, I was like, how come we don't ever go to church? You know, I was like, my dad, I was asking, because my family was kind of broke up, you know, and stuff. And I said, how come we don't ever go to church? And she said, I mean, I just believe I need to be a good person. And I thought about that. I said, well, there's a lot of people who think that. There's a lot of people who think that this is just a bunch of, why would we gather? Why would we come? Why would we, why? I mean, there seem to be. Guys, you, you do understand that those who defended this faith were persecuted, chased into hiding, murdered. You realize that, right? That if this was not real, why would you defend a lie that would get you and your family murdered? Wouldn't you just go, never mind. When the government comes after you or the religious zealots come after you, if, if they were to do that this day and age, would you, would you stand there and say, whether I live or die, it's still true? Because I'm thinking of an eternal destination while they're trying to eliminate me from a temporary destination. And you say, people try to discredit the Bible. Why would you write, why would you write a Bible that goes against everything man wants for himself? Why would, how would mankind devise scriptures that go against his every desire? If he was going to write something, wouldn't you write it to your advantage? Why would he defend a faith that would get him murdered? Why would he defend a story of a man being resurrected if he's going to have his head chopped off for it? We don't even want to offend people in a break room at work. I saw a young lady, we were at the yogurt shop yesterday, a young lady walked in and she had a, um, she probably couldn't have been 17 maybe. She had a little tote bag, you know, like a big tote bag that women carry sometimes. And it's like a canvas and it was black and it had a pentagram on it. And it said Satanist. And she was walking around, probably her dad with her or something. They was getting their little ice cream, just happy as can be. If she don't find out that there is a hell to shun and a heaven to gain, you see, none of her, she can finish school. She can make millions of dollars. See, you got some friends. This is what I don't understand about church growth. The pastor's banging on the table and all the other believers banging on the table. Please get people to church. And I know church is not the savior, but church is how you get assimilated into the kingdom. You can meet the Savior anywhere. You can meet him at the job, but you got to come connect with the body. That's, that's the part that you got to get your mind renewed. You can't assimilate people at work. You got to get them out of that environment and here, right? Jesus died for that. 
He died so you can assemble. He died so you can have the kingdom. He rose so you could see this, right? How many friends do you have? They're going, listen, I'm going to say this as bluntly as I can. They're going to hell. To hell. If they don't know this story. When are you going to tell them? I'm embarrassed. They're going to hell and you're embarrassed. That you don't turn that around, y'all. You don't get that back. Once that day is done, it's done. You don't get to turn around. You don't get to say, well, I was going to tell them, but I was kind of shy. I didn't want to, I know that they have this crazy lifestyle. They're far from God. They don't know God at all. But I was kind of embarrassed. And not only their eternal destiny, but here's the other thing you won't get without the Holy Ghost. You will not get your eternal purpose on earth today. There's an eternal purpose for your life on this earth. Did you know that? In other words, in the kingdom of God, there is an assignment and a mission that God is trying to achieve through you right now. Without the resurrection, you will not be able to know it. The wisdom of man, the system of man, the technologies of man will blind man to think and deceive the nations, the Bible says, to think that they are okay. And then when the day comes, they will burn in the lake of fire and many that you know Jesus will say depart from me I didn't know I grew up in a Christian home you never came to me and took the gift I know you thought you knew me but I don't know you it's not God's will that anyone should perish God does not send people to hell people send themselves The resurrection was so none would perish. The love of God. But the kingdom, living that now, I mean, that would get me, that right there would sell me. I say, I love the fact that I'm not going to hell. But now I love the fact that when I get up every day, I don't have to live for myself. I have an actual purpose on there. Everybody looking for their purpose. The kingdom supplies a purpose from heaven to you every day on this earth. There's no better feeling in the world. There, listen, if you want to get up in the morning and be happy about life, I don't care if you work at the Dollar Tree or if you work at the law firm. If you get up and you want to be happy about going out into the world, you should be excited that God sent you here and fills you with his spirit so you can go show them a better way. Now, I know many people are saved already, but I got to ask you a question before I let you go. There's no turning this around. I don't know what tomorrow holds for you. I don't know. You don't know. But I can tell you this. You don't want to walk around with a question mark, am I saved? And how do you get saved? By faith. All you do is say, wait, Jesus died. Jesus was buried. He shed his blood for my forgiveness. All of my sin, past, present, and future. I have an, I have the blood on my account already. And he ascended. And all of that, he put me inside of him, and everything you've seen happen to him, it happened to you. And you say, well, I didn't, I wasn't there 2,000 years ago. I'm, that's right, because it's by faith. It's just by saying, I believe it. Isn't that amazing? God doesn't require you to die on a cross. He doesn't require you. All you have to do is endure the persecution because of your faith today. I mean, the world is going to come after you, but so what? You're already talking. Listen, you can't kill a dead man. It's not I that live. So can we just, every head bow, every eye close. Let's stand to our feet while we're doing this. I'm going to pray for you. Then I'm going to let you go get your children. Let you have the best resurrection Sunday you've ever had. But I don't want you to leave. I couldn't tell the first service. I want to say we had one or two hands that went up. But I want to see in this service... If you, born, if you are born again, maybe this was just awakening to your faith, but if you are not sure, you don't want to walk around with this question mark. Am I aligned with, am I connected to God? So just bow your heads all over the room. Let me just see. I'm not going to call you to the front. We're just going to say a prayer right where you are. But if that's you, can you just throw your hand up and say, I'm not sure about that. I see your hand, miss. Put your hand in the air and let me see you and wave at me. Amen. Thank you. Bless you. All, all you guys in the middle. Anybody over here on the left side or the right? I see your hand on the left. Amen. Come on. On the right, I see you. It's this simple. It's this amazing. 
And God is that good. He don't care what you did yesterday. He did something for you before you even had a past. Do you understand that? By faith, you will receive the Holy Ghost today. By faith, you are a citizen of the kingdom of God just by believing in him. Hallelujah. Anybody else? I think there were five people there. Praise the Lord. Okay, put your hands down. How many of y'all raise your hand if today, I'm, you're a believer, but if today this, this shook you and woke you up, raise your hand. Yeah. How many of y'all are going to turn your faith loose now? You're going to put it in another gear from now on. Amen. There are people all around you that need you to tell them this great news. Amen. All right, let's pray this prayer together. Say, dear Jesus, today I realize that you died for me. You shed your blood for me so that I could be washed clean. I believe that you died in my place to give me the kingdom, to give me the Holy Ghost. And right now, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead so that I can be saved. And today I confess it, that it is all true. Jesus died for me. So right now, I make you Jesus my Lord and my Savior thank you for saving me I accept the gift now I want you to say this say fill me with your spirit till I overflow govern me by that spirit show me how the kingdom works and use me now for your glory just say it say I surrender say I surrender I surrender just declare I am saved all over this place today I know there were five or six people, and I know many more of you are just stirred in your faith this morning to go work for the kingdom. So I bless you today, and I want to see you excited about your faith. I want you to go out and bring people back to this place every single week and just be fired up by what God is doing in your life today. Amen. God bless you guys. We love you, and we'll see you next Sunday. Amen.